Hi. In this video I'm going to show how to use my ESC. I have one ESC with some wires all to it. It doesn't have any firmware. I have a discovery board with the cable that I'm going to use to upload the firmware. And I have a controller like this one. Not the nutshack this time. That I'm going to use to control it. I also have a receiver for this controller. What I also have is I have a, a computer with a completely clean install of Ubuntu 14.04 Not that clean, it's my living room computer so it doesn't have any development stuff so the step should be more or less the same or exactly the same as, a, as on a completely clean install and uh, yeah, let's get started Alright, so I'm not going to use a screen capturing program because I have to log out and log back in and then I have to cut the video also, if I use the camera, I think it will be more natural to follow because you really see what all the apps look like. So the first thing, I open a web browser and I go to my home page. And then I go to the ESC post. And scroll down to the tutorial which starts uh, here somewhere. And now we open a terminal and we simply cut and paste on the commands. Now the first steps that we're performing now are to add a repository with the toolchain for the R microcontrollers. And uh, now we install this toolchain. And the next step will be to install the Qt dependencies for BLDC tool. Actually I think they are already installed on this computer but it doesn't really matter. I use them for my LED controller that I also wrote the Qt program for. So, yeah, actually there was something else to install. Open OCD. Yeah, of course. Now we are add or use it to the dialog group. This is so that we don't have to use uh, root access to access the USB port of the EC. And this command is to remove a package called Mona Manager, because if I have that installed it do try to take over the serial port and then have to wait like a minute or two before I can use the use EC after plugging in the USB and that's quite annoying. And this step is to make sure that we don't have to be roots to well use the programmer. And uh, well that's all the dependencies so let's log out and log back in. Can't type my password for some reason. Uh, maybe the computer will wake up. There we go. Wrong. Alright, so open the web browser again. And terminal. And uh, go back to where I left. So we create a directory with all the source code and uh, enter that one. And now we fetch the firmware from GitHub. It takes a while, quite fast anyway. Enter the directory. And now it's time to connect the EC to the USB port and also going to connect, connect some power so let me move the camera a bit so you can see that so simply have my lab power supply set to 21 volts and uh, I connect the T-connector 
and uh, I used a USB programmer, the t uh, discovery board this time. I have to plug it in to reload the UDEV rules. And I plug it in to this port, which is for programming. And uh, now we type, go back to this one. And we type uh, make upload. First, it will compile all the firmware. Takes a while because it's compiling ChibiOS and stuff, it's quite some code. I could have used J4 to make it a bit faster because I have more than one CPU, but it shouldn't take, it shouldn't take that long. Okay, so now we're uploading the firmware. Verifying. And it said verified OK. So now we have the firmware. Now I have to cut the video because I see that the battery in my camera is running out so I have to fetch my other battery and continue the video from that point. Okay, so we're back. Now we're going to go down one directory level and install BLDs tool. So paste in the link from the tutorial and this will fetch BLDs tool from GitHub. It's quite fast. And do directory. So Q make. All the commands are here as well, by the way. And then we type make. And I'm going to add the J4 to make it compile a bit faster. And while it's compiling, we can unplug the programmer and uh, plug in a USB cable to the AC. Let's use this one from the programmer to the mini USB port. And while we're also at it, we can also plug in the motor. I'm going to use this one, which is a 5065 236 kV motor. Plug it in. And uh, this tool is finished. Let's start it up. And the first thing to do is hit the connect. And uh, it should say connected in the lower right corner. And this probably means that uh, we got the firmware installed right. And now we hit read configuration to get the default configuration. We're going to leave the limits as they are, because they should be fine for demonstration. If you have a different setup, um, different battery, battery voltage for example, then you can change the limits here a bit. And now we go to the sensorless tab, and uh, we hit start detection to try to find the motor parameters. And it worked on the first try. If it doesn't, then you might need to change those. So what should happen is that the motor spins up, slows down, and spins slowly for a while. If it doesn't, then something is probably wrong. Then you can experiment with those. So let's put in the parameters. Let's uh, set them a bit lower, like I uh, described in the tutorial. This one I can set it to 85. And this one seems to be fine as it is. Um, yeah, we can leave them as they are right now. Right configuration. And now we're going to use uh, this controller to control the motor. So I'm going to take the receiver, and uh, it is a standard receiver with the PPM signal and then a server cable. And then we're going to plug it into the AC, use the port in the corner, and the ground. GND is the connector, the pin in the corner. So let's switch this one on. And now nothing should happen because we haven't configured it yet. Go to the app configuration tab and uh, reconfiguration to get all the default parameters. And app to use, select PPM. And after this selection, you have to reboot. So hit reboot down here. And it says not connected anymore. And then you have to connect again. And uh, go to the PPM tab. Let's say set control mode disabled and part configuration. 
when you change anything here, you don't have to reboot because it will be applied uh, right away. And now we hit the uh, decoded PPM value and it should display the value that is reported by this one in this box. So if you change the slider now, it should change. Well, it doesn't for some reason. Let's try to reboot again and see if it works. Okay, so now it works. It should have been working before, I don't know, know why it didn't work. Anyway, so let's set the control mode to current. Hit right configuration. And now we should be able to control the motor with this one. And uh, we just got the fault code because I was using braking with the lab power supply. Uh, let's see what that looks like. If you have a sensitive power supply then you probably shouldn't do that. What will happen is that the current limit or the voltage limit of the EC gets activated. And we got a pretty high voltage. Alright, so that's it.